Okay, so lesson three. By me, objectives. Uh, describe the competencies involved in leading your team, developing your team members, and achieving results for your team. Analyze how leadership competencies impact gold, goals, and uh, lastly, define vocab. So if you remember from lesson two, um, there's these things called attributes, and these develop your competencies and your skills, right? So attributes can be related sort of towards um, your personal traits, right? And competencies, like I said, skills or habits, and those help you finally get results. So um, three main competencies are leads, develops, and achieves. So let's go into that first one, leads. So it's made out of leads others, builds trust, extends influence beyond the chain of command, leads by example and communicates. So these are all things a leader should do, right? So a leader should lead others, build trust, right? Okay, so lead others. Uh, yeah, we're gonna go through all of these, and that's all of leads, and then we're gonna go through all of the things that go through develops and all the things that go through achieves. <clears throat> so leads others. So you, you know, you influence others, and you might be asking, you know, how do I influence others? Well, one good way to start is you encourage hard work and you recognize achievements. And, um, of course, you instruct people, right? You, you influence them. You kind of tell them what to do. But those will help you. And then another really big thing that will help you influence others is, you, you know, having a genuine desire for your team to succeed, the, the people you're leading, right? If, if they see that, they actually, if, that you actually care, they will actually care, right? And you will have more influence out over them. They'll be more uh, committed to the mission, whatever you're doing. Um, a big part of leading people is understanding, you know, how people follow. So there's different kinds of followership. So there's compliance and there's commitment. Compliance is kind of like, you know, people go along with what you tell them. And it's good for short-term and in immediate tasks. And it's bad for, you know, initiative and good teamwork long-term. So it's, it's a short-term kind of thing, right? Um, and then there's commitment. So... Commitment changes attitudes, beliefs, and behaviors over time. So um, if I'm in a program over a really long time and I'm committed to it, right, I'm sacrificing some time towards it, some of my values and, and my beliefs will be shaped into the values of the program, the ethos of the program. Um, and so this is really good for like teamwork and, and stuff in the long run, right? Um, a big part of commitment is you have a sense of responsibility um, as a follower. So, you know, you have personal involvement. So, for example, um, if you're talking about leading others, right, um, in football at least, uh, I'll use it as an example, the coach leads others, right? And to get people more committed to the program, he gives different people different responsibilities. Like, for example, the coach doesn't um, fill all the water bottles before practice. The, the coach doesn't bring out the equipment, right? That's, that's stuff that we do. It's stuff, uh, that's the jobs that we do. And having that responsibility, that personal involvement, gets us more committed to the program. We're more, you know, involved in it. Um, when leading, we lead with purpose, motivation, and direction. Now, um, one thing about direction is you don't want to give too much direction, right? Because that's micromanaging. Like, I'd, I could tell all of you guys, um, turn on your cameras, turn on your mics, right? But that wouldn't really, like, there would be no use in it. There would be, you know, no what and why. There would be no... It wouldn't contribute towards the goal. It'd just be managing to manage or directing just to direct, right? Uh, speaking just to hear the sound of my voice. So, you know, limiting people's freedom without them buying into it, without them having a purpose, um, they don't like that. So you should try not to micromanage. And, yeah, like uh, another point, the what and the why. So if you give the what and the why, as in the purpose, right? If you give the purpose to do something people will actually um they'll they'll, they'll do better uh, they'll be they'll buy into the cause more and then to touch on motivation because i've touched on purpose and direction to motivate people you can set achievable goals um one thing about leading others is that you should keep in mind that leaders take responsibility for poor performance so you know if someone messes up well that's your fault as the leader you are in charge of everything that happens and um, yeah welfare you should care about uh, the people that you are leading that's it so leads others I know that was pretty long but uh, that was the longest one out of all of these I think the rest of it should blow by pretty fast sorry
like that was you know one page of notes for me on just like one point but uh it shouldn't always be like that going further into the lesson so building trust it starts with you um so you know be fair and respectful towards team members uh you should evaluate your own trustworthiness right like do people have a reason to trust you um should take action to engage teammates and, and build you know positive relationships you know, a good way to start is, you know, hey, do you have any siblings? Do you have any uh, hobbies in common with me, right? You start making a friend. Um, and then you should have a positive climate, right? So it's open and positive. And uh, it's one where you yourself follow through with your own actions. So, you know, kind of like leading by example. But um, you're, you're, you're establishing the norms, kind of, of the group. And it uh, to the right, you see the lyrics of lord's homemade dynamite and it's kind of like you know like making friends like let's let things come out of the woodwork i'll give my best side tell you all my best lives yeah awesome right no no all right uh that's a blank slide um oh yeah extends influence beyond the chain of command so um basically just means be a leader outside of GRC. you know you plan things with your friends you solve conflicts with people for example your parents right so this is all about being working to become a better leader and so one thing that will help you with that is extending your influence beyond chain of command outside of GRC, right <clears throat> next thing leading by example so to lead by example you should be a role model and to do that you should have high standards for yourself if you know, in Raiders, right, if I ask someone to do push-ups, right, I do those push-ups with them. I have high standards for myself. Like, they see, you know, my uniform look a certain way. They'll be more inspired to do it themselves as well. Um, uh, to also be uh, a role model, to, to, to be an example for people to follow, you should have a will to succeed, and you should push through adversity. You know, if something comes up, you don't complain. You find a way to push through it. And come out the other side, you know, dusting yourself off. Everything's okay. <clears throat> and last thing, communicates. So, big part of communication, of course, is telling people things. But an even bigger part of it, you know, most of communication is actually listening, right? So, you should learn how to be an active listener. So, that means, you know, you're paying attention to them, obviously. But you're not only paying attention to what they're saying, you're paying attention to other different cues, different communication they're giving you that's not verbal. So, for example, body language or, you know, um, different emotional cues that will help you become a better listener. Um, when you're communicating, you should uh, try and get to a shared understanding, so like a common ground. If I'm telling, you know, for example, imagine you're uh, a waiter taking an order at a restaurant, right? You don't want... Um, to bring back something that's wrong, right? The, the the wrong order, right? So you have a shared understanding of what this customer wants, and you know sometimes a waiter will go like, "Hey, so you ordered the lemon lime and the big orange, right? Whatever." <clears throat> so try to reach a shared understanding, and you yourself, when you communicate, you should pay attention uh, just as much as you should listen to voice and body language and, and emotional language. You should communicate. And, and work on your body language when communicating and your voice, you know, your tone. You should have self-respect and confidence when you're communicating. And uh, depending on what you're communicating, you should have enthusiasm, right? So right now I'm not talking like this. Um, it would make it would make it a lot harder to pay attention to whatever that person is saying. So now, um, next thing is developing. So it creates a positive environment. Um, prepares self, develops others, and stewards the profession. So creating a positive environment. Uh, it should be a learning environment, right? So what that means is, you know, people can make mistakes, right? You learn from them. Um, and you encourage team members to take ownership. This could be, again, giving followers responsibility and encouraging them to take initiative. Um, you encourage team members to work together. Um, like I said, yes. Um, you don't play favorites or allow someone to get picked on, obviously. That should be just like anything towards a positive environment. Or anything as, you know, someone in a team or someone in a society. You shouldn't allow someone to get picked on. Um, but especially as a leader and especially if you're trying to uh, create a positive environment. Um, and then 
when you're having uh, or, or when you're trying to create a certain environment, you should have high expectations, right? Because it, it really only helps you. Consider high expectations as competition. And like change the two words for the other one. What that means is, you know, everyone has, you know, what, what's expected is hard work and success, right? You're, you're kind of competing against yourself to be better. And, th and that's a really good environment. And no matter what you're doing, if you're, if you're, you know, selling toothbrushes, right? You know, you're, you're trying to sell more than the next guy or what you did yesterday. Or, you know, if you're in Raiders, right, you're trying to become better every day, right? So there's high expectations and that'll really make a positive, fun, challenging environment for everyone to, you know, stay active and um and really be like i said committed to the program um next thing prepare self right a leader should prepare like be prepared uh within themselves um obviously maintain mental and physical health right that's with anything but especially as a leader like i said because they're you know a little it's a little more stressed kind of um position in any organization so those kinds of things matter more because they can come out of the woodwork when you don't expect them to um, you should expand your expertise in whatever you're doing so uh, as Raiders commanders right I should be an expert in whatever exercises I'm teaching right so you know if I want people to do more push-ups I do certain exercises to help them get to that level I you know know all about what's happening different workouts work different muscles right and if I don't know I should expand that expertise I should be prepared myself I'm not gonna ask you to know or do anything that I can't do myself um, and then self-awareness so people yeah yeah sorry I got cut up um, self-awareness means, you know, you're kind of aware of your strengths and weaknesses, and that'll help you prepare yourself for whatever you're doing as a leader. If you're trying to meet a quota, if you're trying to accomplish something before a deadline, if you play to your strengths and weaknesses and you have self-awareness, that'll really help you. Sorry, I, I got caught up. I was looking at my notes. Uh, a little bit of a brain fart. Um, big part of develop is not only developing yourself, right, like also developing others. So... Like I said, strengths and weaknesses, evaluating the needs of others, um, coaching and mentoring, becoming you know a role model for people, and building team skills, and uh, that's with challenging, realistic assignments. So if something's you know too easy, people won't really work together. People won't really um, step up and become a leader to other team members, right? And you know if something's too challenging, or you know not realistic, that won't help anybody become a leader or develop them uh selves as such either because you know they're struggling themselves too much to you know kind of step up you know they're too preoccupied with whatever they're doing so challenging but also realistic assignments that that little sweet spot as do as the profession doesn't really mean anything so i'm not gonna have a separate slide for it it just means do a good job um so now we've done everything except for achieving results and achieving results really just means getting results. There's no other sub parts to it. Like, uh, for example, developing others, right? There's four different parts. Achieves literally just means gets results. It's very simple. So to get results, right, uh, you should have your priorities in check. So, um, or set priorities, right? So if I'm leading a Raiders practice and I want certain things done, I have certain priorities. I'll manage my time to allocate those priorities, you know, and make sure that they're done. So um, I'll do maybe less team bonding, less, uh, you know, waiting around for people that are late and more of the stuff that I actually wanted to do, you know, like running around like Merced, for example, right? Um, part of uh, getting results is recognizing good work of people that have done things well. So, you know, uh, for example, if Dat did really well in this Raiders practice, I'm going to recognize that, you know, he did, he, and that'll help why, why this is in the gets results kind of, um, tab is when you recognize good work, people are actually more motivated and they'll get more results. They'll get better results when they're motivated. So that's why it's, it's here. And then, um, 
to get better results, you should also um, get feedback, right? You look for ways to improve and you adjust towards that. So that's, we've done everything. Um, I've also like analyzed how leadership competencies impact goals because I've given examples for everything I'm saying, right? So we've kind of already done that. And then now it's just vocab. Everything here is pretty self-explanatory. The descriptions are on the screen, so just pause the video if you need it. Um, and then we've done everything. Thank you.